This is a 100 watt charger and these are some USB-C and USB-A charging cables. Okay, that's nothing special, but in some way it is. These cables have a display built in here where you can check how many watts are used in real time to charge your device. Well, you don't care, you say? Fair enough, then that video is most probably not for you. But if you want to know more, stay tuned. In this video, I will unpack them, show you where you can buy them as I did, and will also show you some use cases how fast you can charge multiple devices simultaneously. So I would say let's jump right in. All right, first of all, I will show you the anchor charger here that you plug to your power supply. Let's open it. This one is the larger and heavier ones. So they are smaller as well, but I will use this one for all of my tests so you can see how much power it delivers to my devices. So it's pretty heavy. So this is from Anker and it supports up to 100 watts. So as you can see here, it's the Anker 736 Charger Nano 100 watts. And I think it's really nano because it's pretty small, but still heavy. But the good thing is here, you can plug in here your notebook. For example, I can use it for my MacBook Pro and it can charge it up to 100 watts. So that's really cool. And we will test it afterwards if it reaches this charging speed. All right. So as you can see here also, it's an IQ3 and IQ2 system. So it will not get that warm. That's, that's cool because it's very powerful and therefore it could get very hot. But the new system here, promises that it will not get that hot. We will see it afterwards. I will also show it then to you in, during my test. Then there is also a quick start guide included for the Nano 2 100 watts. And on the first side, you see immediately that there is a different usage between number one and number two. The first image shows you that when you use one cable, you will get 100% of the power supply to your device. The second picture shows you, you can use also three cables simultaneously and the charger will split the power supply to the devices to three parts. And we will see then how it works because I will do a real life test as well. All right, so I would say this is enough information about this charger. Let's see which cables I bought. So I bought here the same cable. So for me, it's very important when I do some tests that I can also see the watts the device delivers. So in that case, I went with the here with the USB to USB-C cable. It supports up to 100 watts. So that's great in two different variants. So one meter and two meter. And it's from the company basis. There are not so many companies out there which provide you with a digital display, as you can see here. So I show you the one meter cable. So you have here a display built in. It's the basis display 2. It's a fast charging data cable, USB-C to USB-C. So you can not only use it for charging your device, you also can use it for data transfer, which is also really cool. Okay, then I would say let's open it. Let's have a brief look. All right, the packaging is very minimalistic. And here you can see immediately um, the display here. And when you plug it in, I think it's very bright and you can see how many watts are used by charging a device. So what do we have here? Maybe there is also a protection around this. So here you see again the company name. And on the other side, you see here the display. So let's put this aside. I think I don't need to unpack the two meter cable, but it will look like the same, just a bit longer than the one meter version. And last but not least, we have another cable here. So this is from Nivikia. I don't know, but anyways, it doesn't matter. I will put all the links to the product in the description down below, but let's open this as well. And here you can see, this is also a USB cable, a USB-A cable in our case to USB-C for charging our devices. And it also comes with a tiny display. So I can show you then the two USB-K cables in combination with the USB-A charging cable and see how much power it will deliver to the devices. Okay, so that's it. These are my testing objects, I would say, and one meter, two meter, and my USB-A cable plus the Anker 100 watts charger. 
Alright, first of all, let's have a closer look at the charger. This is the Anker 736 charger, also known as the Nano 2 100 watts. Despite its compact size, it delivers up to 100 watts of power, more than enough to charge a MacBook Pro, a tablet and a smartphone at the same time. It features two USB-C ports and one USB-A port, giving you plenty of flexibility for different devices. The matte finish and solid build quality give you a premium feel. Just keep in mind that when you charge multiple devices simultaneously, the total output is split typically 45 watts on the first USB-C port, 30 watts on the second and 18 watts on the USB-A port. Just so you know. <laughs> Let's continue with the first cable. Set the basis 100W USB-C to USB-C cable. I picked it up in both the 1 meter and 2 meter versions, just in case. It supports fast charging up to 100 watts with power delivery and quick charge 4.0, making it ideal for laptops, tablets and smartphones. My killer feature though is the built-in LED display that shows real-time charging power, so you always know exactly how fast your device is charging. The cable feels very premium with its braided design and metal connectors. I also tried to get a USB-A to USB-C version from the same brand, but unfortunately Basis doesn't seem to offer one. So I looked for the next best thing and found one. This is a cable from Nibikia, a brand I hadn't heard of before, but it claims to support Quick Charge 3.0 and a lot of other technology included Apple's fast charging. The USB-C connector has an integrated eMark chip to ensure safe and adaptive fast charging. Okay, and one more thing, all three cables support fast data transfer too. So you're not just getting fast charging, but also ultra fast syncing capabilities. So that's really cool. Well, I think that's enough specs. Let's get into some real life testing. I will try out several devices, which are around 20 to 40% battery capacity left. But let's start with the biggest one, my MacBook Pro with the M4 Pro chip. Review is right here. According to Apple, it can handle up to 140 watts of charging power. But since I'm using the 100 watt Anker Nano 2 charger, I'm expecting to see something around 96 watts, at least in theory. So let's plug it in and see what happens. For this test, I will plug it into my Tessan 6-in-1 USB charging station, which supports Scan PD 65 watts fast charging. But this time I'm not testing the hub. I'm just using it for cable management. If you're interested in a dedicated test of that hub, feel free to leave a comment right now and I will prepare a separate video for it. Okay, but what matters here now is how fast the Anker charger powers up my MacBook Pro. So let's connect it. Okay, the charging power starts counting up and after a few seconds, I would say it stabilizes around 82 to 83 watts. It's not the expected 96 watts, but still powerful. Thanks to the GAN 2 technology, it should stay cool too. Now let's try something smaller, my iPhone 15 using the same cable. It peaks around 17 watts, which is actually pretty good. No complaints here. Next up, the iPad Air 11 inch with the M3 chip. After a few minutes, it levels around 28 watts, also very solid, I would say. Now let's switch over to the USB-A cable and test it with the iPhone again. And here we go, it peaks around 6.9 watts. Seems like USB-A is a bit more limited, but okay, it's not essential to use it that way. All right, so I would say let's try something smaller, for example, my Apple AirPods Pro 2 case. The battery isn't huge, so I expect a lower rate. And yep, as expected, one watt. Kind of funny, but totally fine for such a small device. Okay, time for the final test. I will now connect all three devices, the MacBook Pro M4, the iPad Air M3, and the iPhone 15, at the same time to the Anker charger. According to the specs, it should deliver 45 watts to the MacBook, 27 watts to the iPad, and 17 watts to the iPhone. So let's see how that looks in practice. After a few minutes, these are the values I see on the LED display. 42 watts for the MacBook Pro, 27 watts for the iPad, and finally the same 6.9 watts as before on the iPhone connected to the USB-A plug. 
not bad at all. I will leave all three devices connected for about 30 minutes and then check if the charger gets noticeably hot. All right, 30 minutes are up. The charging output has remained stable overall. The iPad was already at a higher charge level, so its charging speed naturally dropped to around 18 to 19 watts. But after touching the charger, yeah, it's definitely warm. I can still hold it in my hand, but you feel the heat. It's a bit uncomfortable to the touch. So just make sure there's enough air around it and don't cover it while charging your devices. I mean, yeah, it has a built-in protection, but hey, no need to test its limits, right? Still, I would call this a successful test. It's really reassuring to know I can go on vacation with just one compact charger in my bag. And just for comparison, here's the original MacBook Pro charger. I mean, size does matter, right? And in this case, definitely. Well, I think that's it. Nothing groundbreaking, but I personally really like being able to monitor my charging process. If something goes wrong, I can spot it right away on the display and figure out whether it's the charger or the device causing the issue. If you're interested in the anchor charger or the Bezos and Nibikia cables, feel free to check out my Amazon affiliate links in the description below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, a like would really help push it out to more people. And if you don't want to miss future uploads, make sure to subscribe here to the channel. That said, thanks for watching, stay healthy, take care, and I will see you in the next one.